tonight, FA Cup third round, Everton against Middlesbrough for the third time of asking. But we're also not forgetting what's going to happen this time next week in Auckland, New Zealand. We'll have a full look at the Commonwealth Games scene, especially the kind of milers and 1500 metre men that Sebastian Coe is determined to follow. 1954 in Vancouver, it was Bannister and Landy. 1958 in Cardiff, the great Australian, Herb Elliott. Four years later in Perth, New Zealand's Peter Snell. Then the emergence of the Kenyans, 1966 and 1970, Kip Kano. 1974, Philbert Bailly in record-breaking form. for England in Edmonton, 1978, Dave Moorcroft. Then in 82 and 86, 1,500 metres success, back to back for Steve Cram. For Sebastian Coe, a great Olympic star, has yet to take gold in the Commonwealth Games. Auckland will be his last major championships. I've not been through a Commonwealth Games properly and I wanted to leave athletics on that kind of platform. I didn't want to drift out in a, mm -hmm. in a Grand Prix race or something that was, was insignificant. Lloyd Hunnigan has a target as well to regain the world welterweight title he held in the 80s to reproduce the kind of form he showed against Jorge Vaca. Vaca has been trapped on these ropes now for nearly a minute. He's got it! He's got it over! He had to go! With us in the studio, Mark Breland, the WBA World Welterweight Champion, and we'll see him sign the contract that will give Hunnigan his chance. But it's a tough chance against a former Olympic champion beaten only once in his professional career, a man of class and power who we'll be hearing from later. Five Nations Rugby Union Championship starts on Saturday, 10 years from their last Grand Slam. Can England repeat the achievement? and what's the form of the rest. England's captain, Will Carling, will join us later. At Goodison Park, it's Everton, four times FA Cup finalists in the 80s, but finding second division Middlesbrough a tough hurdle in the 90s. Match highlights in a moment. And from Kitzbühel in Austria, little snow, but much celebration. It's 50 years of the Hannon Calm, 50 years of the bold and the brave. Clamour, the downhill champion. The comeback, the biggest story in skiing. It'll be even bigger one if he wins here now. Come on, he must be there. He's there, 20282. He's destroyed it. Now, before the FA Cup, quickly through tonight's quarterfinal results from the Littlewoods Cup. Uh, Nottingham Forest 2, Spurs 2, great fight back by Tottenham who were 2-0 down early in the second half. Goals by Lineker and Sedgley rescued them. Sunderland 0, Coventry 0, Sunderland's Gary Bennett and Coventry's David Speedy sent off for fighting in the second half. And West Ham won, Derby won, late equaliser by Dean Saunders for Derby. West Ham had Martin Allen sent off. So FA Cup replays this week, we're about to see if it's Everton or Middlesbrough who faced the away trip to Sheffield Wednesday. On Monday night, though, it was Millwall who finally came through their replay against Manchester City. Millwall can perhaps count themselves lucky to be ahead. A first goal for Paul Goddard, but handball on the way? The referee thought not. 1-0 after two minutes. Seven minutes later, it was 2-0 and a far more comprehensive strike from the very impressive Teddy Sheringham, playing his first full game for seven weeks. But back came City with the best goal of the match. Coming up a glorious swerving shot from Paul Lake. And you can see why he's been called up for Bobby Robson's World Cup get-together next week. And just as City threatened to take it to extra time, Sheringham finished it off. From the cross, it's Cascarino's header on. And very quick reactions from Sheringham. Millwall 3, Manchester City 1. So Millwall at home to Cambridge United in the fourth round. 
Sheffield Wednesday wait for the winners of tonight's third meeting between Everton and Middlesbrough. The commentator at Goodison Park is Tony Gubber. Three months ago, Everton were leaders in Division One, but they've since slipped to ninth. And tonight must try again to overcome second division Middlesbrough in a third round FA Cup tie that threatens to become a marathon. Everton start tonight with the team that finished last week's 1-1 draw. Pat Nevin preferred at number seven to Peter Beagrey and £2.2 million Tony Cotty, who is officially on the transfer list, still only a substitute. Middlesbrough's 11 is also the one that finished last week's draw and they've returned to Goodison with the confidence of last weekend's impressive 3-0 win in the Northeastern derby against Sunderland. Tony Mowbray's own goal settled the fourth round FA Cup encounter between these teams two seasons ago. Everton winning at Goodison a second replay 2-1. And our referee tonight, Mr Stephen Lodge of Barnsley. And Everton beaten FA Cup finalists from eight months ago. Start this uh, second replay attacking the goal to the left. This is uh, McCall. Two goals at Wembley. Everton, who've uh, only had one win in the last five games. Cooper penalised. Middlesbrough have never been beyond the sixth round of the FA Cup. And there's four to look for in the box. Came off McCall. McCall again, and Pierce should have that. Proctor. Ripley. Back to Proctor again. Davenport, Slaven, Parkinson, McDonald, Sharp, Mowbray and Strong, still in play, Whiteside, Sheedy, McDonald, Brennan, Cooper, Davenport, Oh, good play by Davenport, faced by Snowden. Well, he's finally squeezed it back to Cooper, and Middlesbrough won a good ball in here. Ripley. Middlesbrough holding possession really well. Oh, Slaven! Have to go down, there's a real chance. Bernie Slaven claps his hands. Well, Middlesbrough had kept possession for quite a long time. They'd built with patience and purpose. And Slaven put it well over the bar. Full back to full back. Snowden. McCall. Well, Middlesbrough are crowding them out and giving them no room at all. Davenport to Slaven. Kerr's made a break. Ripley. Still Everton haven't cleared their lines. Parkinson again! Oh, just like he did a week ago. And also at home against Sunderland in the derby match of the weekend. Blistering 25-yard shot, and this time Southall held it. Tony Mowbray back in the action after five minutes off the field for treatment to an injured eye and stitches. Mowbray's good header again. He gets good distance on those headers, Tony Mowbray. Again, Ripley's the man they pick out. And now it's McCall for Everton. Whiteside. Sheedy is on his right foot, doesn't want it there, does he? McCall! Nevin. Nice close control by Nevin. But again, nothing comes of it. Slaven. Not sure what uh, Simon Coleman intended from that. Parkinson. Oh, he's trying to put it back to his keeper. He's found Sharp. Pears is out of goal. The angle was just 
too acute, and no Everton player had got far enough forward. That'll be a corner. Oh, let off for Middlesbrough. Well, it was Gary Parkinson, the hero seven days ago, whose poor back pass put in sharp. Ten minutes to go to half-time. Crowd appeal for climbing, and then hooked away by Davenport. Ripley again, look at the space he's found down this right-hand side. Parkinson makes the overlap. They've got Everton stretch now, and there's four to look for. Oh, off the feet of Snowden for the corner. We might have had a goal at either end. Brennan shot. And now, having almost scored 30 seconds ago, Everton have got to defend desperately. Proctor to take the kick. And safely held by Southall. Well, you can't take your eyes off this one, can you? Look at Nevin. He'll have to do it on his own. Everton just didn't get players forward in support of Nevin quick enough. to McDonald and Sheedy Newell oh well read Davenport skips over McCall and that'll be a free kick will it no right side's tackle Nevin in possession Snowden faced by Brennan Newell long range beautifully struck splendid strike we might have had, well, two goals in this goal mouth and one at the other end in the space of a little over a minute. Nevin to take the corner. And the variation, this time Sharks back header. Well, Mike Newell hasn't scored since October. But he was fingertip close then. Oh, it was a poor attempted clearance by Parkinson. McCall, Newell, Snowden, to Sharp. Oh, he took it well on his chest, Graham Sharp. Nevin. Snowden, drilled in. Oh, and it missed them all, Newell. Sheedy, left foot, a foot wide. Drilled in by Snowden, missed the defenders. Newell's first attempt was blocked. Sheedy on the left foot, just drilled it wide of the post. Cooper. Brennan. Cooper again. That was blocked by McCall. Nevin. Sheedy. Hustled out of it by Proctor. Ripley. Slavin's available at the far post if he just picks him out. Oh, does it hit the back of an Everton defender? Well, if you have a criticism of Ripley, it would have to be that he tends to run with his head down. Stuart Ripley was beautifully found on the right there by Proctor, but look at Slaven. It's a perfect ball from Proctor, and he wanted a first-time cross over all the defenders. And I'm not sure whether Snowden, I think it was, who headed it out, realised what had happened. Cooper. Wide to Davenport. And they're certainly using every inch of this pitch tonight. Brennan. Crossed in right footed. Oh, Slaven! Well, the flag had gone up and it wouldn't have counted. Only satisfaction in that for Bernie Slaven will be that if it had gone in, it would have been called back for offside. But he 
Will Feely ought to have hit the target from that range. McDonald. Still to let him come forward. Nevin. Mike Newell. Snowden. Nevin. Keon. Newell. Nevin. Now they want a good cross. Is this it? Away by Brennan. For once, Mowbray didn't get his header in the six-yard box. Parkinson for Ripley, who's run his heart out here tonight. He's never stopped running. Slaven left it for Brennan. And it's still in play. Well, Mark Brennan had the final header. I think he must have called to Slaven in front of him to leave it. But Ripley's running down the right has been terrific. Slaven went to jump, then left it. Brennan's downward header. And Southall did only save it, he kept it in as well. And with 16 minutes left, Everton make a gamble with a double substitution, sending on both Tony Cotty. Right side, left foot chip. And there's Atavel, 22-year-old Dutch, under-21 international. And they've come on to replace Kevin Sheedy and Mike Newell. 15 minutes left. Slaven. And this game has been played at such a frantic, breathless pace. I wonder how wise it is to put two subs on who have got to adjust to the pace of the game. Oh, sharps away, right foot. Pears saves it. Hooked away by Parkinson. Sharp for possession, it broke kindly for Everton. McCall! Oh, yeah, hooked away again by Parkinson from Nevin and Cotty. And the arrival of the two new players has certainly injected some more passion onto the terraces. Nevin to take the corner, Everton's nine. McCall blocked and away for the third time by Parkinson and Slaven handled. But what a great save by Stephen Pears from Sharp. Snowden down by Mowbray. McDonald and blocked by Coleman and now Middlesbrough really having to defend. Ratcliffe. Sharp. Always going to be the keepers. Well, whatever the outcome here, Everton will reflect afterwards that they've certainly had the chances to win it. Perhaps particularly Graham Sharp. But you still feel it's going to be one moment and perhaps one mistake which finally settles this second replay. Nevin. Cotty. Twists and turns, left foot. Again saved. Mowbray waited too long. Nevin. Oh, Pat Nevin. Everton have not had a better chance than that, and they've had plenty. And the anguish, you can read it on the faces on the terraces. Cotty, who's just come onto the field, who twisted beautifully around Mowbray. Pears saved it but couldn't hold it. Mowbray wanted too long, and Nevin should have hit the target from there. And Middlesbrough will make a quick substitution, because Peter Davenport can obviously take no further part. He seemed to pull a hamstring as he went down the left-hand side. Alan Kernahan comes on for the last two minutes of the 90. Did play in defence after Pallister left initially, but more recently has been playing up front. McCall. Ratcliffe. Touch for Kernahan. Kerr. Keon. 
Snowden. Sharp with Coleman in attendance. Atterveld. McCall has had a storming match. Atterveld. Oh, they missed it. Nevin! Hit the ball! It's in at last! And it's wide side! scored the goal, of course, that beat Everton in an FA Cup final for Manchester United back in 1985. And there's the final whistle. It's a big disappointment to Middlesbrough, who fought long and brave, but in the end, it was that goal in the 269th minute of this cup tie by Norman Whiteside, which has put Everton through by the skin of their teeth. They'd had so many chances to wrap it up. They'd all gone begging, and finally Whiteside, with seconds left, and Middlesbrough thinking of extra time. What a finish, and what a glorious cup tie. Everton won, Middlesbrough nil. Everton, but only just, and they're now away to Sheffield Wednesday in the fourth round. Well, now it's boxing, and Lloyd Hunnigan's dream of winning the world welterweight title. Nevin to Snowden, to the best left foot in the business. Everton appear to be having another revival with all their recent goals coming from midfield. McCall's cross, a partial clearance, should be no problem as it falls for Sheedy's right foot. <laughs> now there's a thing for Ron Atkinson to contemplate over the next seven days. 